Welcome back. It's almost summer. Happy Memorial Day. I hope you guys enjoyed your barbecue, had good weather, enjoyed your three-day weekend, three days off work. I'm back with my girl, Candace Davis-Price. It's your boy, Al Rowe. It is the Bet Online Salute to Troy podcast. And today we're coming at you with the top all-time USC offensive lineman. But we're not going to do 10. And the reason why we're not going to... Everyone's so sad about that, right? I mean, they can be. I don't care. They're not going to do 10. We're not doing 10. We'll do five. And the reason why we're doing five today is because I think today is a good day. Because last week, we were unable to record because you're getting ready for your state championships out there. So you're working hard. Working hard, coach. So we're not going to take that from you. So the, week is, the news is about two weeks old. But we're going to talk about Mike Brown. We're going to get in Mike Bond. We're going to talk about what happened. We're going to get into the details. And I want to see what you think about what's coming out about him. Right? So, outside looking in, people who aren't, aren't USC people say this is another black guy on the university. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> we must be an eight-headed eyeball monster because there's there's not enough eyes for the black eyes we got. Right. Okay. So, We'll get into, we'll have five. You have, so the bottom five on your list, you can cut them out and just take your top five. And we're going to get into this. And then we'll get into the good stuff. So anybody who got left on the offensive line, I'm sorry. It is what it is, but we're going to get moving forward. All right, here we go. The top five offensive linemen. I'm going to let you go first. Also, you're looking very golden. So we know there's some sun out in out in uh east uh it's not East Lansing, are you in East Lansing? Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor. The way you said it, the way you said it changed it. All right, all right. So anyway, we're gonna get to the top five line. I will say, if you guys haven't noticed, look at our girl, she's golden brown. She's looking like perfectly cooked. The sun must be shining in and our and in Ann Arbor, Michigan. In Ann Arbor. Say that five times. The sun is shining and the gas prices are low. So yeah, I can <laughs> I can get on the places- but like you said, you're gearing up for the state championship tomorrow. So I literally um just got off the track not too long ago. All right. I'll let you go first. Ladies first. You have the floor. You're number five all time USC offensive lineman. <laughs> Quick disclaimer, I just want to make it very clear. I know there's been a little bit of feedback on my picks and how I do my picks, but I want to say that I'm an elite athlete. So how I perceive an athlete to be might not necessarily match up with people's stats and um, how they like to box people in. So let's make that very clear. Second, most of these guys I'm lucky enough to have played with. They call it the Trojan War, not played with. Played with as in these were um, guys I saw um, around campus, played with, hung with saw them win national championships. So I need to say that. And I'm fortunate enough to say there's at least three guys on my list that I actually know. So if all my stats aren't correct, do what you do with it. But I actually know these guys and you don't. So that's what I got for you. Ready? I'm ready. If stop reading, you must have read the comments. Y'all stay off my girl on the comments, man. If y'all got a, if y'all got a problem with her, with her, see her on the track. See me in a 40 yard dash, whatever. That's a, all right, so yeah. I got Matt Khalil. That's a good one. That's a good one? Uh, uh, that's a good one. That's a really good okay. one. Okay. Do you remember? So, do you, do you, do you, you weren't at school with Matt, though. Matt is the younger brother, right? No, yeah, I was with the older brother. Right. That's that's not bad. He was pretty good. That's a yeah. good one. That's okay. kind of high for me. He's not that high. He's not that high on my top ten. Well, just to be 100, it was a stretch to get me 10. So. It is a stretch. It is. I will say this. It was harder looking for offensive linemen because offensive linemen is a <clears throat> is a underrated position, right? People don't understand how good it is or how important they oh, are. Oh, completely. But my number five is a Khalil, but I went with Ryan. You went with Ryan? I went with Ryan. Okay, now, well, we, we in the family. Right. So I went with Ryan because I actually played with Ryan. Okay. People don't understand how smart Ryan really was and how much better he made the defensive line. So when we get to talking about defensive line, a lot of guys probably on the list 
Ryan made him better. I think Ryan played four years as a starter. If it wasn't, it wasn't. If it wasn't four, it was three. But Ryan was really good, and he had. I mean, his pro career was really good. But Ryan was really smart, aggressive, athletic, great locker room guy, a beast. Like, um, yeah, he was a true center. Like, what you want in a center. Is what you get out of and Ryan. What is Khalil. it that you want in a center? Because enlighten, because everyone thinks that they know what a center is, but if you played by someone. So the center is actually the smartest person on the offensive line. He's the one that's calling out all the blocks. He's making sure everybody, he's IDing the linebackers, which way the play is going. If there's any types of checks, he's got to make sure the, the other four guys understand what the checks are going on. Like he, he is the one, he's the one that touches the ball every offensive play first, right? So he has to make sure the ball's under control. He knows the play. Like that's why when people like this guy is really smart for a center. Ryan Khalil was extremely smart. Like he was probably one of the best centers that I've, that I've, that I have ever seen. Well, I'm nervous about the rest of this list because he seems pretty highly qualified, and I would agree too. So he's, a, he's on my list. I'm putting it out there. He's on your he's on your list. Was he on your team or is he in your top five? I'm going to just real. I just had a solid five. The other five were a stretch of fillers based off of my research. Okay. So what is your four? Sam Baker. That's a good one, too. It's a good one, okay, because I, I mean, I'm like, we was, we was picking it, and then I'm like, bro, and as I'm, I know you don't like this, but I just like to do my research with some of my guys that are experienced, and I'm like, and, and they're like, see, Ray, that's a hit. I was like, all right. That's a good one. No, your guys who are experienced. Your guys who are experienced normally put you on the right track. Okay. So that that that's a good one. That Sam Sam, Sam Baker is a good one. Um. So my 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 number four. My number four is close. I think I'm gonna go with Sam at number four too. I struggled with this. I was back and forth, but I think I'm gonna go with Sam at number four also. Hey. Um. You want to feel real upset? Let me introduce you to let me introduce you to Bruin. <laughs> this is Bruin Price. <laughs> Bruin, say hi. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> Are you going to be a Trojan? You know what school you're going to? Yeah. What school? No, okay. We'll wait for the NIL signing. It'd be great to have a Bruin Price named Trojan. I mean, that'd be a Trojan. Let's just. Did he, did he say the other school? He didn't say. Oh, okay. He didn't say whoever gives you the green. <laughs> hey, that's true. Um. So yeah. So look, was, go ahead. Sam, Sam. All right. I'm gonna tell you an interesting story about Sam. Sam's dad created the Arena Football League. No. Yeah. I don't know if he. Uh, hold on. Wait. I don't know. Let me. Let me. I don't know if he created it or if his dad was the commissioner of the Arena Football League. So, like when we were younger, the Arena Football League was big. Sam's dad yeah, was the commissioner yeah. of the Arena Football League. He had the yeah. LA Kiss, right? Uh, no, the Avengers. The, the Avengers. Avengers. The Avengers. Avengers. The Kiss came after. The Kiss was when they tried to recover the AFL. Uh, oh, okay. But, okay. um, uh, yeah. So Sam. Sam. That was the commissioner, but Sam. Okay, so what you want in a left tackle is what you get in Sam. You want an athletic long guy, right? And Sam was an athletic long guy. Like people don't understand how well offensive linemen can move. And then on top of that, okay. you need to understand offensive linemen move very well, but defensive linemen move better than offensive linemen. Right. And so, I'm just I'm glad you said it. I'm married to a nose tackle. So that's really the only reason why I understand what a the offensive line does. I know you yeah. gotta hit the gap and you gotta hit the swim technique and all that. <laughs> yeah, so like like but Sam, Sam was big, athletic. Sam was also smart. And Sam and Ryan played together, so I think that had a lot to do with it. And they were like in the same class. I think they got drafted the same year. But Sam was a great locker room guy also, but he was also really quiet. Like people don't like he was a quiet guy and he wasn't really like your offense alignment. Maybe I never hung out with him outside, outside, really outside the field, but he was quiet for the most part. Good dude. But Sam was really, really good. All reach. 
<laughs> he put me in. He, I remember I went up against him like in one on ones when I was like a freshman. I, that's what I learned what an offensive lineman was at that level. Like, but great footwork, man. Sam was he. He was one of those pillars on those national championship teams. Sam was great. Sam, Sam, yeah, Sam. That's that's a good one. That's a really good one. What you got? All right. So number three. Number three, we're, we're, so we got to get classic here, All right? Okay. So behind every great running back, there's a great offensive line. Okay, so if you remember agreed. my greatest offense, if you remember my greatest running back, right? You know who remember who my number one running back was? That would be the Juice Man. The Juice Man. We all know who my number one running back was. <laughs> my number three, my number three offensive lineman was the offensive lineman for OJ Simpson. That's Ron Yari. Who was that? Ron Yari. Oh, so you're about to enlighten me. School me. <laughs> so Ron Yari was the offensive lineman for uh, for when uh, OJ played. I think he had three All-America selections. Um, man, he. so you have to watch his film to see him play. And he played in a time where the rules are a little bit more lenient. He was just nasty. Go getter, broken nose, bloody nose type, busted nose. Okay. Guy. Big time guy. So And what yeah. was it? This? this is Ron. Ron Yari. Okay, so I read a little bit about him and I'ma just be transparent. He's on my list as well. And um, but I, I didn't know all that about him. So we're on the same page. I, I just feel like there's no OJ without Ron because you know you need an offensive line. Like in order for OJ to be number one, Ron had to be up there. I think Ron set the the foundation, not the standard, but he like laid the soil for offensive line at USC. So that's why I think Ron Yari is is my number three. Who do you have at number three? All right, this is look. You're gonna call me a girl and say I'm sentimental. I went with Ryan Khalil. That's not bad. I got you to can't. stretch my list a little bit. He's a little bit higher than probably most. But again, there's a little bit more of a personal connection when you see these guys play out there. Like you said, I understand the O-line much more because my husband was a nose tackle. So I know how they got to be. And I'm like, I've seen these O-line pancake big boys. So I got Ryan Khalil. Ryan Khalil is not a bad number three. You see, okay. I don't think there's very many. I, I wouldn't argue that. Like it's it's arguable because it's USC, but like you can't say like oh that's a bad like Ryan Khalil is great like he's one of the he's one of the best like you don't make the wall by being very sorry right and Ryan yeah. Khalil's on the wall so um, I have no argument with Ryan Khalil. Before we get to our top two though, I want to remind you guys it is NBA Finals time. And if you are ready for the NBA Finals and you need to get a bet in, in fact, let's check the score. You can get all your live bets with Bet Online. We got Miami Heat, Denver Nuggets. Who are you going to go with? Who are you going with, Candace? You got Nuggets or the Heat? I'm going for the underdog, the Heat. The Heat. All right. Well, get all your live bets in. The Heat are probably going to lose because it's 103 94 right now. It's like 24 seconds left in the game. But you go bell line, you can bet for the next game. This weekend is the Belmont and Force Racing. We got baseball. Uh, we got USFL going on right now. Soccer, tennis, golf. The US Open's coming up. Everything you need to bet on sports, you go to betonline.ag. The promo code Believe, that's B L E A B. And we will give you a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's betonline.ag. Promo code Believe, B L E A B. And we will take care of you on Battle Line. I will tell you I'll be on Battle Line on Saturday because I like to play the horses and there's a big race this weekend. And I do not know who I'm going to pick because there are a lot of good horses in there. And the horse I did like to set the pace scratch. So I have to rethink my strategy. So if you have any idea what we should do, put your, put your, put it in the comments. And then let me see if I, we can put something together. Anyway, moving forward. Moving forward. We got our top two. Top two all-time offensive linemen. <clears throat> I would like to hear. I would like to hear your number two. We'll do it this way. I like to hear your number two, and okay. I would do my number two, my number one. I want to know your number one. We'll do it that way. So, who is your number two? So, my number two is your is your Ron Yari guy. Based off okay. of my research and understanding, 
Um, I'm glad that you enlightened me a little bit more because I feel a lot more confident about that, but I'm gonna just keep it real. That was just a stretch based off me being a resourceful individual. So you've enlightened me on this, um, this O-line guy. How much did Des help you with that one? He didn't, okay, just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> Because we already talked about offline who I thought was in my top 10. He was like, hell no, nah, don't put him on. <laughs> did, Dar did, did Darnell help you this week? No, nah, he didn't because I was like, you know what? I'm going to save them when we go for the defense because okay. they're really going to keep it right. I was like, oh, line, you know, I, I don't think I was be 100. Nobody's expecting too much from me. But I feel confident with my number one, though. You're actually doing really well. Well, when you scrunched it to five, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to knock this out the park. Yeah, yeah. So my number two is a reoccurring name on the list. Okay. We've heard this last name before. He was in the linebackers. His his nephew was in the linebackers list. Legend. Okay. Now, I was debating, should I make him number one? Or should I go with the obvious number one? I think I'm going to go with the obvious number one. So my number two is Bruce Matthews. Oh, okay. He was in my 10. He was in my 10. Well, you got him way too low if he's not in your top five. You know, I, I know. I, you know, I, had, I got three guys. I told you I had three guys on my list I knew, so I had to roll with it. Yep. No, it's fine. So Bruce Matthews, Bruce Matthews set the foundation for what a USC offensive lineman is, right? So he, like, Ron Yari laid the soil. Bruce Matthews set the foundation. I mean, all out, go get him, guy, Buster, Pancake, man. It, so the thing to me also is when you see him run, old linemen who can run exceptionally well are the ones that are exceptionally good to me. He's one of those dudes who ran exceptionally well. So, like, I mean, great career, Hall of Fame, NFL, USC Trojan Hall of Fame, Family Legacy. Family but, Legacy, quit playing yeah. with uh, Bruce Matthews, yeah. He, he set the foundation for who, what a USC lineman should be. And that is my number two. I'm going to roll into my number one. So my number one, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious. I don't think very much people will argue it. Um, he set the standard. When you think of USC offensive line, this is the guy you think of. Some people may think of Bruce Matthews or they may think of this guy. But I'm going to go with, you know, the obvious which I haven't really gone with the obvious before in the past. <laughs> kind of, I haven't like. I'm pretty sure some people will argue like what it will be, but I'm gonna go with Big Anthony Munoz. Can't go wrong with Anthony Munoz. Anthony wow. Munoz is my guy. I'm gonna go with number one. He's the standard for offensive lineman at okay. USC. Everybody knows Anthony Munoz. Great USC career. Left tackle move. Played his ass off. Big time name. Another hometown kid. Got to play in his backyard. I mean, we could just talk forever about Anthony Williams and what he did at USC and how great he was. And so my number one is Anthony Williams. Okay, so I asked my defensive um, lineman husband, and he mentioned him. And he gave me some real cool facts about him being – I mean, he is Mexican, am I correct? Uh -huh. And being one of the most highly rated Mexican football players. So in L.A., you know that's a big deal. Right. Um, so yeah, is that not your obvious? That, I mean, that's that's the obvious number one. I was thinking him or Bruce Matthews. Like people like, oh, you for sure? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But I I, I went with Anthony Williams for number one. Okay, so again, I'm all right. I went with Tyron Smith. Okay. <laughs> again, I had to go a little bit with. I'm like. I feel, I'll be honest, I feel a little bit safer, you know, with the ones I know. So, but I got to keep it interesting, right? I, I'll give you a disclaimer. I crunched you to five, and I didn't tell you we were crunching to five until, like, before the show. You did 10. Tyron Smith is top 10. Okay. He is top 10. He is top 10. But, like, I, I he's top 10 all time, no doubt. Will he be top five? I don't know. I will tell you this. So the fans I just, and I, I just go. I just go with what I knew, and he's what I knew. <laughs> I understand. You shouldn't talk to Dez. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Uh, so we we did the we did on Twitter we did the poll the, so we did the fan poll. Anthony Mulio sixty four percent, Bruce Matthews twenty one percent, Ryan Yari seven percent, Tony Basel eight percent. And so Tony Basel, people want to tear us up in the comments because we didn't put Tony Basel in there. Tony Basel was six on my list. Okay. I mean, I thought he was good, but I don't I don't think he was better than Ryan and Sam, and he's not better than the top three. Like you know, he just missed the top five. So. I I, I, I'm gonna just appreciate it, but I'm like, if I'm a Trojan for life, and these are like in my mind, they're my boys because I went to school with them. We was broke together before NCAA cared about giving us money to eat. What I look like not included, like they're like, dang, you actually knew me and I had a chance to put me on the list and didn't. So they'll live. I knew a lot, I knew people and I didn't put them on the list. They'll live. (laughs) Oh man. (laughs) <laughs> they'll live we'll make it work we'll make it work so i mean tyron smith good player played for the dallas cowboys uh he is top 10 all time yes he's a little bit younger than me um great player i don't have anything bad to say about him i'm trying to make him a number one i can't make him a number one i don't see him better than bruce matthews sorry <laughs> but i mean to your defense, like you said, like I said, he does belong on the list, but it's your list. You live with it, you roll with it. Or are you happy with your list? Oh yeah, I'm rolling with it because right. the acceptance of my guys from my Trojan for life is a little bit greater than the exception of you know. Because if I would have went with the traditional list, and I still would have had an, an issue. At least I I went with what I knew. I will tell you this: They got mad at us with the linebackers because we didn't put Clay Matthews Singer. And Clay Matthews Singer, although he was a good player, he's not uh, the top ten all time. <laughs> he's probably top twenty, but he's not top ten all time. Um, so we got our top five in. It's time to get down, and we're about to dig into some stuff. Before we dig into some stuff, I would just want to let you guys know: if you're tired of just eating bad and i'm tired of eating bad and i don't like eating bad and you want a, a simple solution you can just start taking athletic greens i started taking athletic greens because i didn't want to go through drive through and i want in the morning candace davis wants her athletic greens so please give her some athletic greens so she can experience what i'm experiencing feeling great 75 high quality vitamins minerals low price great tasting um it's great with stomach health it's cheaper than getting all the different supplements or stuff that's in there is, is organic, not all GMOs, gluten free, dairy. It covers everything. It has A1, AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. It takes, it's one thing you do every day to treat yourself great. And people love treating themselves great. Right now is the time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system and convene with convenient daily nutritional nutrition with just one scoop of water every day. That's it. No need for many different pills and supplements. To, to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one free year supplement of immune support and vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com, salute to Troy. Again, that's athleticgreens.com, salute to Troy. Take ownership over your health and pick up your ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Athletic you need to get- they, they, they said they're not going to give us any more free athletic greens until we sell some. So if y'all want Candace to finally get her athletic greens, we need y'all to use that code and get some athletic greens so Candace can experience it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like it a lot. It's a team effort. All right. So let's dig into this. Let's dig into this. And we got a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. Two Fridays ago. Breaking news, USC AD Mike Bond decides to step away, right? right. So, so here, here's the thing about it. And I, I'm going to pull up the original headline. I'm going to pull up the original headline that LA, that uh, LA Times came with. Mike Bond has resigned from his position as USC athletic director, effective immediately. Uh, LA Times Sports has learned due to health reasons. So he said it was due to health reasons, right? So this was about 
Friday, May 19th uh, at 1.21 p.m. So we'll say it happened about 1 o'clock and all the news broke due to health reasons. <clears throat> they released statements. The president, Dr. Ford, released a statement saying, you know, now is the time we need to do it. It's in a good place. We have to move forward. Or that might have been Mike Bonds, like we left it in a good place pretty much. Never in their statements, neither one of them never, ever, ever say anything about their health reasons. I get home. We do a live that day. Me, Ryan, and Jamal, we do a live. I'm pulling it up. My wife says, you're about to podcast on a Friday? Like, yeah, the USC, and this is this one, this one right here, Kansas, this is going to get you. My wife was also a Division One athlete. She plays softball, so she's in tune with sports, and she understands what Division One sports are about and what they do. I said, "Yeah, the USC AD just resigned." She said, "Something's about to come out. I see going to get in trouble again." I said, "What? I mean, you don't know that?" They said it's health reasons. Moments later, moments later, before we start podcasting, an article comes out and says. Article comes out and says there was an investigation opened up by the same attorney that Baylor used to take down the Baylor football program for all their accusations. That came out around 3:30. More articles started coming out, and pretty much he was creating a hostile work environment. That's the best way to put it. This is the athletic director at SC. Let's rewind back to two years ago. We'll go back to two years ago when they hired this guy. And I'll get out. I will say that I, I, I'm not playing both sides of the bridge because I'm gonna say a, I'm gonna make a statement later. And I I support I support excuse me I support both statements that I'm gonna say. And I also said the statement on the live. President Ford made the right decision, and she had to make a, de a decision that was best for the program. And I agree with her with the decision that she made. But let's go back to when he was hired in 2019. He gets hired in 2019. He's a stand-up guy. There's no bad guy. There's nothing that comes out in the past, this and that. Nothing bad comes. No, he's, he's, he's good. He has a clean record. Article released two days ago. Was it two days ago? I'm pulling it up right now. All right. Let me see. I think it was released May 25th. So last Friday, last Friday, there was an investigation opened up on him at Cincinnati. So now I'm not going to take back my statement, but now that means something was being hid when he got hired. And something's going to come out about him at Cincinnati that President Ford knew about that she didn't do anything about. So now I'm a little bit upset because I think this situation could have been avoided and she didn't do anything to avoid this situation. So, some accusations. No, first, I'm not going to tell you the accusations. I, I'm gonna warm you up. I'm not just gonna. I'm not gonna just put you in the boiling water. I'm gonna let the water boil on your end. <laughs> okay. Because we we have to understand from 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 both of our ends, yeah. we we were in, not involved, but we saw the Reggie Bush stuff before it hit the media. We knew right. what was coming. Like we right. were there for the interviews prior to, right? Right. Um, we were there after. The investigation where people were copying homework. Actually, you're probably there when it, when like maybe your freshman year or like right when people copy homework. The OJ Mayo situation, this and that. Everybody trying. Oh to yeah, I was ball. there for all of that. I was there for right. Mike Williams challenging Mike Williams and Maurice Claret challenging um, the Supreme Court. So, uh, I'm going to ask you because this is just the beginning. Because I'm gonna, I'm going to get into what why he's being investigated. What is he being investigated for? How do you feel about this right now? So my thoughts are that this is damage control, that if you, which is very familiar with self-imposing your own infractions, then whatever might be worse 
could be less of a blow. And outside of whatever's going on in that office, I'm a bit concerned only because he's had some significant impact. I mean, he's isn't he part of this Big Ten, us coming to the Big Ten? Correct. So I'm I'm very interested. It must be something big because if he's involved in big moves, I mean, even the track for all he's hired some winning coaches. You got Bronny James coming, all types of stuff. I'm a bit concerned on what it could be. And so speaking of Bronny James, when when it was three, Mike Bomb was at the Laker game, um, front row. Uh, recruited Ronnie James and not not the head coach. All right. <laughs> so I mean, I, I I get it. This article comes out, L.A. Times. He's looking. They're looking into it. There's investigation. There's investigation that was sprung out at Cincinnati, right? So then, there. Uh, Dr. Ford also hired the attorney, like I said previously. She she put in this investigation um, and made it seem like it was for everybody okay. in the athletic department. But it was really only for him. But everybody was getting interviewed, and some things came up in the interview, right? And so are you feeling like USC knew about this before? I think USC knew about it and hit it, but wait. Wait. So I want to get this right. There was so in it, I want to read it right. It says according to On Three, Cincinnati was conducting an investigation into Bond's workplace behavior upon his November 2019 departure to Los Angeles. Several Bearcats staffer complained of the university's office equal opportunity. Complain to the university's office of equal opportunity and access that bonds fostered a workplace environment in which it was difficult to advance for ethnic and gender minorities from the report. Right? Here is a quote. The complainant also alleged that Bonds said a former athletic department employee received interview offers only because he was black and made disrespectful comments about the president, Neville. Patino's race, according to the investigation's note. The second UC Foundation employee also alleged that Bond made disrespectful comments about President Patino's race to him, according to the investigation note. This was at Cincinnati. This was the first allegation that came out against him against Cincinnati. So let's just be 100. I, I, let's I have, wait, hold on. I just want you to know, don't get too upset because I have more. But wait, there's more. But go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead and I mean, say what you want to say. I, I'm, so if USC knows about this, A, disappointing. But if USC did know about this, let's just be real. Like, I'm not expecting perfection out of these athletic directors, and I'm not expecting perfection out of these presidents. And let's just be very clear. It's not just the, in the athletic department that it's a lack of diversity. It's an entire USC administration. So if the president hired someone like this, then it only stems from leadership. Maybe she shares these same values. Right. So I, I, I was thinking that also. I was thinking that also. But then when you dig into USC Athletic, like when you dig into Heritage Hall, there's a lot of minority employees in Heritage Hall. You were in track with one of them. There's a lot of women who work up there. No, seriously, yeah. though. There's a lot of women no, who work right. up there. There's a lot of African-Americans that work in there. You go to compliance, there's mostly women that work in compliance. There yeah. was when we were there. But now, but there's still there's a lot of diversity. I will counter you with this. I think when the investigation happened, and this is only me being, this is me alleging it. I don't know how true it is. I don't know. You know, this is just me. Yeah, I thought I'm legal words out there. Alleged. Yeah, that's, this, this is what I, this is, this is what I think happened. I think Dr. Ford knew about the investigation. She asked him about the investigation and she did what I would have done. I don't know if you would have done this, but if I'm trying to become the AD at USC, I'd be like, it's not a big deal. It's water in the bridge. It should be closed any day. I said something joking around. 
I should have never said it. I learned my lesson. I understand what I'm getting from this. Like, I know I should have, I, I should have not said it. That's not who I am. The investigation will be closed. You know, we're good. I mean, I'm trying to get the job. It might be, there might be some, some. I'm I don't know. I'm just feeling like it's a bit of a scapegoat and it's, and a, and it's a bit of, there's layers to this, right? So. Mm. So let's continue. Let's continue with the article. <laughs> All right. According to the documents, the investigators conducted 27 interviews after after the athletic department staff men, members who raised concern about treatment towards them and administrative reviews was conducted to access to the climate and culture of the athletic department as a whole and to gather the concerns of professional misconduct and unprofessional disrespect conduct. The investigation was eventually closed in early 2020. While the whole allegation may have been constructed evidence of violation of the university policy, there is no opportunity for the respondent to answer as he departed before the opportunity of the OEOA to address the concerns according to him. That's according to on three. The LA Times reported, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because you have a friend who works in this department. So I'm, this one, this one might, this one, this is the one. This okay. is the one. The LA Times reported that Bond made inappropriate comments about the physical appearance of female colleagues, including remarks about their dress, hair, weight, the stuff members said that made them feel uncomfortable, according to you, two USC sources with the knowledge of the incident. His resignation came one day after the Times inquired about the investigation of Bob. So here's where it gets good. Now keep in mind what I just said. He was at a he was at a, a press conference on Thursday, and somebody said, "Hey, there was an investigation on you, and the report is coming out. Can you tell us about it? Can you tell us about the work culture at USC in the USC athletic department?" He resigns the next day. Now I have a comment about that, and I wanted to talk to you about this because I have, and you you are a female. Yes. So I have I have a comment. I about it. <laughs> I have a I have a, I I want to say something. So when I first read it, I just thought it was athletics and people being more and more influenced by today's world. So I just thought he was tough. I thought he was just walking around just busting everybody like, hey, we need to get this done. We're at USC, I don't want no excuses. There's, you know, like I have no time for this. I have no time for that. Like I thought he was just really just busting everybody's ball. Now that I'm reading deeper into this, the thing that bothers me is you have to know today's climate, right? And I can say this, when we played, everybody stepped on the scale, no matter what your sex is, no matter what your sport is, everybody stepped on that scale and everybody knew what they needed to weigh. And if you did not weigh it either too small or too big, they were going to tell you about it. That was in the early 2000s. You are in a professional environment. And this is... This is how I'm gonna say it. I follow our mutual friend who works in the, who works in that in that um, department, right? And I follow her on Instagram, and I know that she was going to the gym a lot. So I'm thinking to myself, like, I understand that you're working out, I get it, but you're going like every single morning, like you are a Division One athlete. Your body hurts. What are you doing? <laughs> like, how are you able to do that? Like. Like, no rest, no break. So now you're reading that, and it's like, did he ever say something to her that messed with her mentally? You know what I mean? And if he did yeah. that, it's, you know, like... You want me to just you, keep, like, but I, we just going to keep it 100? Go ahead. Don't cuss, though, just in case we make the radio. I, I'm, so no I'm not even my... Um, I'm a woman. I've worked in a traditional environment. I've worked in an athletic environment. I've been in an environment where I'm on a two piece on a global stage. So if anyone can understand the idea of body shaming or, but I'll be 100, like part of the role of being an athlete is, is being in a certain fit. 
I'm not at all agreeing, but I also feel like it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a lot of backlash, but like, I need you to not be offended so easily. No, no, hold on, wait. It's not me. Not you, not you. No, 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 but these aren't to athletes. These are two employees who are working in the Yeah, athletes. but part of why athletes are phenomenal, put me in that athletic office, I would welcome your comments. I but not everybody. Your comments. You're right. And that's, and that's the issue, because if those are the people in the front office making decisions, then maybe you should start putting in some, ad, and I, I know it's not going to feel good about saying this, but the reality of it is part of being an athlete is that we learn resi resilience. We learn that we get joker coaches that say ridiculous things back to you. There are some athletes that be like, oh, I'm going to transfer. He ain't going to talk to me like that. And there's another, like, bring some more. So I'm not at all, I'm just saying, like, this can't weigh so heavy that you're going to the gym every day. I'll be like eating my hot Cheetos in his face. Like, what'd you say? Oh, I'm looking like what today? Yeah, I, I probably am. And that. But that's also, but that's also, okay. So that's also you. And people don't understand that you are, you have a tougher exterior than everybody else. Not okay, very. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you some breaking news. You ready for this? What's that? And NCAA couldn't do this now. I lost my scholarship at USC because of poor performance and being overweight. They can't do that now. Right. And when I say lost it, they were like, yeah, don't come back. So when anyone's talking to me and they want me to feel any bit of sensitivity in their traditional cushy, <laughs> I'm like, I had okay. at that point, there was a fork in the road where I decide, oh, am I going to go to a JC and make the club team? Or am I going to work hard to get this back? And when I look at those people that judged me, I probably wasn't making the best decisions. I probably could have been a better Candace. So I'm not at all condoning abuse. I'm not condoning um, no inclusion. But I'm also saying, like, the man. Right. All right. It's like Bill Clinton. Like, bro, let's just be 100. It didn't enable his job to be a phenomenal president. I, I, okay, yeah. And I agree. I agree. But and what? But what? Tell me. But today's climate is so much different. Great. And I'm, 900, I'm 900 years off the boat, and the climate still hasn't changed. So yeah. I'm gonna. <laughs> it, like, and let's just be 100. What's his re resignation package looking like? Because I'm sure he didn't just walk out of there. Oh, yeah, he's not walking. Yeah, he's not walking out. He's not walking okay. out. Okay. So, but I think, and so here, here's okay. Here's the difference. And then this is, you're still, you're still in the athletic world, right? Just a little bit. Right. But like, you're so I, I just got into regular, I just got into <laughs> regular work, like traditional. normal people. Yeah. Traditional, normal people job, like no longer coaching. Like they don't even understand what a team is. Agreed. Right. So like, they don't understand that like a team like if if you mess up if we're running the four by four and I drop the baton, right? That. Right, and UCLA's talking and UCLA's talking mess about me dropping the baton. We'll go fight UCLA. But right then now. when we get when we go get in the locker room in the bottom of looker, you're gonna hold me up against the locker and tell me, Hey, why'd you drop the baton? Right? Great point. Like, Great point. So, but in traditional world, like, they feel like even if I'm doing something shady, you should have my back. And this is, but this is where in a traditional world, and we can go directly to USC because I was there through every allegation. I was there from Mike, Mike Williams and Merce Correct doing um, Supreme Court to Reggie Bush and then all the in-between. Mike Garrett was my AD. So if anyone understands scandal, I've seen it firsthand. So the idea of being, and this is this is where the issue is, because there's so many boundaries in these HR rules, the freedom that maybe that young lady should have been able to go to her boss and say, hey, bruh, I know you're not feeling this, but I'm going to just need you to chill out on that. She can't even voice that. She has to go to an HR professional, then another HR professional, then it has to be documented. And while he's continued to spread a toxic culture, there's no face to face. Like you said in the locker room, we're gonna be like, Alpha, we gotta have this conversation. We can't go out at halftime. They let dragging stuff all the way to fourth and long. 
And now it's like, oh, man resigns. Why didn't you take care of it sooner? Because you had to document everything on HR. Maybe you should have just posted them up in the locker room and said, bro, we done with these um, conversations. I will, I will tell you this, too. I will tell you this, too. If my wife came home, though, I'm just telling you. I'm just, just being 100 with you. And I could probably speak for your husband, too. <laughs> even though even though she can handle her own, right. you can handle your own. So you're not going to come upset. And she won't either. She won't be in tears. But she'll be pissed off like you would be pissed off. Right. And she'll say, let me tell you what he said. Absolutely. And he said that I look like this and blah, 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 this and that. Now, now, me, and I'm going to speak for your husband too. <laughs> I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a have some type of, I'm going to have some type of issue with it. <laughs> right. And at any type of work event where I'm invited, I'm going to have to have a talk with him in the corner. Okay. Just the fact that not, and I'm not being sensitive about it, but. Right, like, no. And you know what I mean? Like. Absolutely. Hey, bro, watch your mouth. And maybe, right? maybe had that, that, that Alfred Rowe conversation, your boy is like. Right. Him... Right. Right. And, and this is the thing. And it, 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 it's, it's the thing. Okay. And I'm going to say this again. Everybody doesn't have a tough exterior like you guys because you guys have been through it since you were eight. This so is the thing. You, was, like, hold on. Yeah. You, guys, you guys have been through it since you were eight. Right. But there's people who's never been through it and they only watched it on TV and they have an idea of it of the, from the movies. That's it. They only have an idea of it from the movies and what they see on Sunday or what they see for you in every four years in the Olympics. That's only the idea that they have. Right. But, People don't understand how intense athletics really is. Okay, but right? yes. So yeah. when you get somebody who doesn't understand how intense athletics really is, and they want to be a part of athletics, and they become the secretary or some type of assistant, right, and right. they end up working in athletics, and the athletic director is pissed off, and then everybody catches the wrath, right? So let's just say me and you both work in athletics. Right. And I, I just want to say this. I agree with you from like you have to have a tough show. You have to understand. It. But I'm trying to get you to understand it from the normal person's perspective, because I've been around normal people and normal people are different from us, like completely different from us. The way they think in everything, it's really different. So if a normal person comes in and works in athletics and they catch that wrath, they don't understand it. Right for us, it's like, all right, he's pissed off. Let him cool off. Let him. We got to be better. You know what I mean? It's not going to last forever, right? And we'll move on. It is what it is, right? Correct. It's probably. And I, I'm. I'm only. I'll tell you this with my marriage. She gets mad at me. She blows up at me. Twenty to thirty minutes later, everything's back to copacetic being good. Same thing with her. I get upset with her. Twenty minutes later, you hungry? Yeah. All right, let's go get something to eat. <laughs> Right, <laughs> like that is the it's, dynamic it's, of, a, of athletes for sure. It, it's over, right? The play's over, because in our mind, and we've been trained in our mind, the play's over. Exactly. For, for well, normal people, the play's not over, right? So th I'm gonna put it to you like this, and I'll, and I'll let you say what you have to say. I'm gonna right. put it to you like this: He comes in and blows off on the, uh, blows up on the normal person, right? Comes in, blows up on him. That person is still holding on to it. Three oh, weeks later. Three weeks later, he comes and blows up again. So now that person has two things holding on to. Three, four, five. For us, we forgot about it from three weeks ago. This is something completely new, right? So that's the part that we have to understand. But I'm still, I'm just saying, I'm still a little bit upset about the body shaming because, let me tell you why. And I, and I'll tell you why I'm upset about the body shaming. Because you're in a professional environment and you have to understand, you have to choose the words that you say wisely. And here's why. What if there would have been a camera crew in there when he said that? What if somebody would have been in there doing some type of interview? What if there would have been recruits in there when he said that? Those are the things I worry about. Like those are, those are things that go through my mind. Like there's a time and a place. If you're at the bar with your buddies, say it all you want. Hopefully it stays between you. But in the office, you never, especially at SC, Candace, you know this, they teach us this. Be careful what you do because you never know who's watching, right? 
And well, so like, when you say that, you never know who's in there and you never know who's watching. That's why I have an issue with doing so, it. But this is the greater issue, being careful with what you're watching. He's been conditioned to behave like this. So the fact that I'm going to just be 100, like everybody, non-athlete, athlete. Oh, I want someone that keeps it real. I want to be 100. But when someone keeps it 100 to you and says, hey, maybe you should get up from your desk and do some steps. Oh, my God. Were they? How? Maybe you shouldn't take the elevator and hit the stairs. Because those fans are working on heritage just to let you know. Bro, well, a workout from the box. So I get it. I, I empathize with you. But the reality is, the reality is, we were forced to be in an environment with the coach or we writing checks to the university. If you're a scholarship. I understand. I didn't, I didn't sign up for this. And how could I was the, he said, I was the first black person. I was like, amen. You right. I'm the first black. Let me embrace that. Instead, the sensitivity of offensive, like, okay, I'm not okay with derogatory, completely disrespected and disregarded. Not cool at all. So don't hear me saying that, but I do require a little bit challenge to continue to do my job. My friend that works in that office, she hustles. She works. Yeah, she's driven. She, she came in as like a, a sports information somebody forever ago. She does what she does. She takes care of her business. I've seen her talk back directly like, yeah, not going to talk to me like that. So She's an AD now, right? Or she's associate a whole AD? AD. Yeah. And she is not She's a, she's a strong brown woman. Understand me? So I guarantee she wasn't going to talk to you like that. And if she was, there'd be a different allegation because she'd be whooping some. Okay. So all I'm saying is I, I flow with it, but I'm also talking about this is the University of Southern California. When we're bringing recruits through, when we're bringing other people around, like that level of excellence, that, le that level of professionalism, we absolutely should exclude it, exclude it, exude it. But your boy might. He was doing what he wanted to do, and they allowed him to do it. And now they're like, "Oh, we might have hurt too many people's feelings. Let's just let's fat, let's write through a nice fat check and move on, because we know how to do that." So, right, right. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need the whole university to do better because continue to shine on athletics. Continue to let the rest of the conferences look. Oh, USC's back in hot water. That's right, because we're always doing something great. We might win a national championship. Y'all gonna forget about all about this. Well, it seemed it seemed like the media cycle is, is, it, it it made it through the media cycle and nothing's come back up. I just wanted to talk to this because we didn't get a chance to talk about it last week. Yeah. So hopefully, I'm not, we I, again, I'm not okay with um, being derogatory. I'm not, ex and you're right. Somebody would be derogatory to him. Ever like catch me outside? You want this smoke? Mm -hmm. I don't. But I I don't like the inappropriate. Yeah, the, the derogatory inappropriate. This is the one thing I don't like. And I, I'm just going to be straight up with you. <clears throat> I was in the coaching profession. And I don't care what you say. They have all these minority ships. They have oh. these internships. And they do this and do that. Being a black man in the coaching profession is impossible. They limit to how many black people they have on their staff. And then when there's a staff full of black people, it's a great thing. It is hard being a black person in coaching. It's hard being a black person in athletics. So any black person who made it in athletics worked as hard as they possibly can to get where they needed to go. And they had to deal with a bunch of challenges. So that person being there because there was black, not cause, just because there was black, because they were probably the best person for that job. Absolutely. After everything they went through. So by him saying that, I lose a lot of respect for him. And like you said, like, well, 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 if he said it, then it must be accepted by the culture she knew she knew there's no way she did not get a report with that being said she oh, knew that no, and that's another that's a that's a bigger issue that i have because exactly you said there's a lot of i won't even say black there are probably a lot of diverse candidates and you probably passed over a perfect on paper diverse candidate and took and don't my mom is white, so I can say this. A white man with a little bit more privilege than your other candidates because maybe that was safer or maybe that was the direction. And now look, so anyone that applied for that USC AD position and didn't get it, it might be on Indeed. I'm going to need you to get back up on there because they they looking for some diversity right now. Right, because like, 
at the end of the day, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, she knew. And I will say this. I will say this. And we always know when violations come out. And I said this two Fridays ago when we did the live. She did get ahead of it and say, you got to go because for the lack of institutional control. I got the investigation. We got the results. Like, we're going to keep the NCAA off of it. She made a perfect decision for that. But she was if you on fire and Clay healthy. She was if you on fire and Lynn Swan. She's so like, oh, uh, she knew. She knew. And that was not a tough decision. Like, it's, it's hard for you to fire Clay Helton because there's no AD and he's not winning. But it's okay for you to hire a dude that has an investigation out that's saying, oh, he only got the job because he was black. You have to look at <laughs> that. That right there is what bothers me. And you can say you don't know on this and that. Black and athletics are it's hard. You can talk to anybody who's in it. Oh. It's hard. Now, the ones who made it to the pinnacle and always get the job, that's because they made it to the pinnacle. And more power to them. But talk about the struggles that, that took for them to get there. There's always either one or two. I will give you a story. I'll give you a story. A coach came up to me. My head coach, he said, hey, I wasn't even recruiting this kid. Wasn't even recruiting him. Didn't know much about him. I Not in my area. Came up to me and said, hey, so... Keep in mind, only black coach on the staff at the time. We're going to recruit this kid, and his dad is the head of the, the black student, uh, whatever, at the University of New Mexico, and he's about to work with the state, uh, something with diversity. We want you to go down there and help recruit him. And I, I asked him, why do you want me to do it? And so they were like, well, you know, like, you know why? I'm like, I don't know why. He's like, we, we, we need somebody he can relate to. Um, so I'm thinking to myself, he can't relate to me. So I'm like, fine. Y'all want to play this game? I can play it too. Little did they know, I already had a job offer to somewhere else. I just was waiting for it to get approved. So I went in to recruit the kid. The dad asked me, well, how's the diversity? All right, there isn't any diversity. It's me and the athlete. Oh, so it's like Albuquerque. Yeah, it is. Like <laughs> He's like, so how do they treat him there? How do they treat us everywhere else? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we just have to get through it. The kid didn't sign. And so, but I was gone already, but I don't care. Like, don't come to me and say, we need somebody to relate to. You should be able to relate to that kid. It doesn't matter if it's skin color. You should be able to pull that kid. It doesn't matter if it's skin color. Because if you can recruit, you can relate to anybody. I walked into white people's houses, Hispanic, Asian, black, and I related to every one of them. And the ones I signed, I signed because I was able to relate. Absolutely. Your boy boy Pete Carroll didn't have no problem bringing in talent. No problem. Pete yeah, Carroll was going they, into the projects at nighttime and nobody had an issue with him. Not one problem. They And that boy were Nike Monarchs too and ain't nobody clowning him. Right. It just bothers me that, and, and I'm sorry, I'm gripping them. Just that comment saying, just because he was black, they got the job. That is, oh, that just hurts me. That hurts me because we don't get the same opportunity. You were born on no, second you know and what? I had a double. I'm starting at home plate. You know what I mean? No, no, you're not starting at home plate, bro. You in double A baseball, hoping to get a call to triple A, maybe to make it to the bullpen at the majors. But I got a small story. For those of you that don't think I know uh, football, I do know this guy named Doug Williams, who I met at the HBCU Bowl. And I asked him a question. And everyone always asks about being a black quarterback, black quarterback. He's like, I'm a quarterback. But he was telling me like in 1970, 1960s, and that and that that's not like 1800s right how he was making 80 percent less but in the locker room he had to come through a different entrance in the national football league winning super bowls from doug williams the that's owner not- he's making eighty two thousand, and the white boys that aren't doing nothing are making a hundred and whatever and he's winning super bowl so i'm saying this to say when i met him he said it didn't matter i was a quarterback i wanted to play ball and I was like, and here we go. Every time, oh, they said I was the first black. Were you the first black? Okay, then bravo. <laughs> Clap it up. So there's got to be some moments even with, within our, that we're celebrating those things and not allowing people to make it a derogatory. Don't give people that much power. And if anything, like, again, I'm not for the derogatories. I'm just saying, Doug Williams taught me that. For right. those of you that think I don't know football, Doug Williams got a picture with him on my Instagram. Yeah, but she, yeah, she, I, I, I 100% agree. She condoned it, right? 
And good job for getting out in front of her, making sure. But she, she knew that was said, right? And like I said, I'm I'm not trying to backtrack on what I said. Like she knew it was said, right? And, and like I said, interview, uh, I was just joking around, blah blah blah. Like I'm taking a hard look at that. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, like there's just certain things I'm taking a hard look at. Derogatory comments, like are you just well, also, I don't want to interrupt you, but. It's difficult when you say, oh, he's a great AD. Look at the big hire he just brought in. You got Lincoln Riley. Look at the big moves that he's doing. You can't just say, oh, I don't like how he does his personal, but his professional moves, he's making he's making power moves. But so I got one very, he's a stand-up guy. This is why we hired him. Those are her words. He's a stand-up guy. This is why oh, we yeah. hired him. She's looking like she's looking like a straight a dodo bird right now. Just, right. Well, yeah, but like that's what I'm saying. Like, like if all right, Gerard, like, hey, he he's kind of foul mouth, foul mouth how like he cusses a lot or is like, he inappropriate? Like, like is he oh, coach Ogeron foul mouth or is he like Pete Carroll foul mouth? Right. Or like, is he Wayne Kiffin foul mouth? Right, but like like so like oh he's he's kind of I need to look into that. What is considered inappropriate? Like, is he, you know what I mean? Like, is it that what she said? Yeah. Jokes? Okay, we could work on that. Like, all yeah. right, we have people could deal with that's what she said. But if it gets to the point, like, oh, uh, I spilled, I spilled chocolate on my desk. Oh, you want me to lick it up for you? Hold on, we need to look into that. Right? That, that's when it starts to get weird. And like, you know, I need to take a hard look at that. Uh, he's a little racist. People know if you're racist or not. Oh, like, he is. Was race, like, this is this is no offense. This is people. Was he racist or was he prejudiced? Because what right. Was like, okay. Right, like you know what I mean? Like, or but like if he if he's a like I said in the beginning, if he was a hard working guy that just ran around just busting everybody balls, toughen up, get over it. But this dude seemed like he was racist and a little inappropriate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he seemed like he was hey, I, I like how you look in those pants today. No, why are you looking at you know what I mean? Like and you're like, why are you, why are you looking at my ass, bro? Like, <laughs> like, like that's how that's how I think a woman will react. Like, why are you looking at me like that? So, neither here nor there. It's been fun. It's been real. We had to dig into that. We had to dig in that. We'll get together next week. We're doing D line. Call your buddies. We're doing D line next oh, week. Lord. We'll get the poll out. We're doing D line next week. I'm this glad we were able to. This will be the ultimate, ultimate D. Ultimate top ten. I might have a guest. I might have a guest speaker. Just saying. Your husband can't do it because he's a Bruin. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> what 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 better person to analyze other D linemen than a than the rival D lineman, right? That's true. I'll but yeah, that. yeah. We uh, we'll do D line next week. We'll get the poll out. I'm glad we were able to dig into Mike Bond. It's been fun. We had deep conversation. You know, hey Mike, what they give you on that? Um, what they give you on that resign? What's your severance? Like, what's the severance? Yeah, what's the like? Like? yeah, um, definitely. They gonna give it's you always, a building? They gonna give you a building at USC? What is it <laughs> it's always been fun. We'll do D line next week. Thank you guys for joining us. It's the Bet On Line Salute to Troy podcast. It's your girl Candace David Price, Coach Al Rowe. We'll see you guys next week. We're free. Fight on. <laughs>